The song is actually tuned up a half step. So you see John Lee playing this in open, and it's because he's tuned up to F. Now, if you don't want to tune your guitar up, you can put a capo on the first fret and play the exact same thing. So we're F, A sharp, D sharp, G sharp, C, and then F. Alright, the other thing you want to add is some nice spring reverb. John really uses a lot in this recording. I imagine, I'm playing out of my Fender Bandmaster, I, I imagine him playing out of a, a Fender with reverb and it crank. Now, the backup band, which I did the call and answer in the intro, um, I don't really hear them playing with that kind of uh, reverb. It's more of just a big band sound that's backing him up. Got a wonderful new guitar, did some upgrades to it, and we'll talk about that at the end. So, my notes will be linked below the video. You can download that and follow along, and we'll get into the lesson. So this song, it starts out with a great call. We're going to slide on the third string at the second fret up to four, catch the third fret of the second string, then hit four again and go back to two and then pull off. Right. You really want to kind of pause at two before you pull off. It sounds silly, but if you just doesn't sound right. And I know it's fast, but there is just this ever so slight pause in two. Alright, so anyhow, then we go to the four string. Two, open, two. That is the first lick. That's what John plays. The band answers him back with another typical blues lick. We're going to play an E, a power chord, a slight pull down on a G, third fret, to an A power chord, and then an E. Right. Then again he will call. So this lick, we're going to start out on the second fret of the fourth string, and then we'll hit um, the open third string, catch the third string at the third fret, slide that to two, and then pull off to open again, just like we did on the first leg. Then we come back to our two, open two on the fourth string. Then we do the same answer. So that's the first measure. We're, we're still in the E chord or the one chord of the blues progression. Now we're going to switch to A. The lick will lead us into the A chord, if you will, the four out of the one, four, five of the blues progression. And the way he does that, instead of hitting, um, it's the very first lick again, but instead of hitting two, open, back to two on the fourth string, he's going to hit two, open, to the open fifth. Alright, so it'll sound like this. That gives us that A, and again, the answer comes in with the A power chords. So we'll just hit our A. We're doing what we did with the E, but just moved everything down. So we'll hit the fifth fret of the third string pulled down slightly to a D power chord and back to A. Alright. So the second measure starts out like this. One, two, three, four. Okay, now he 
he's going to answer that just like we answered the other one because we're moving back to E. Alright, so that's the first measure and a half. Let's go all through it. One, two, three, four. First lick, but we're going to stay on the G string. It'll sound like this. So he just comes off and then hits on, off, on on the third string. Alright, then our answer will be different because we've moved to the five chord now. So we're going B. Alright, just hit. So that's on the second fret of the fifth string and the fourth string at the fourth fret. Just hit the fourth string open. Then we're going to hit an E power chord, but on the fourth root. So it'll be fourth, second string. I'm sorry, fourth string, second fret, and the third string, fourth fret. Back to B. Alright, and then our last lick is much different. Again, this is all part of the turnaround. What we're going to do is this. So we're going to start out on the 2nd fret of the 5th string, come to the open 4th, then 2nd fret of the 4th to open 3rd, 2nd fret of 4th, open 3rd, and end on the 2nd fret of 4. Last answer is just our E. Let's go all through it, medium tempo, so you can see how it all fits together. One, two, three, four. call and answer together in the intro for those three measures. When he does the verse, the call and answers are actually together. So they will play underneath what he sings. He will sing and you will hear him play while the band at the same time is doing Of course the band is in the background but John Lee is doing the very first lick we learned. Then he'll sing again. And then we answer that with the same lick. Okay, then we're going to go to the A. So we'll change it to the A. Alright, now we come back with the E. Now he's going to start the turnaround, so we'll hit the G twice. Alright, and then we're going to come back to our E. And that is the first section of the verse, and that whole thing will start to repeat. Then we're into the solo rhythm. So I'll show you the rhythm. Then we'll go over what's basically verse 2 in the same that we learned here, and then the outro. So the solo rhythm will sound like this. We'll go over the solo after all of the rhythm. Go through 
that again. So basically, the solo rhythm is your typical blues um, rhythm. And what they're doing is, it's, it's more or less a bass line. You'll hear a guitar playing in the background, but it's really more of a uh, just colorization. I think it was added after the fact. Um, most of the band is following this bass line. Okay, so we're going to go open six string to three and five. Then we'll go to the fifth string at the second fret, back to five on the sixth string. We'll do that four times. Then we'll take everything and move it to the A. Alright? We only do that twice there. Then we go back to E twice. Turn around time. So now this will be B. We're just going to do the B note before we move up to the fifth fret to seven, to the fourth on the fourth string, fourth fret, then back to seven. That'll be just one time. Move back to A. And then we finish up with E twice. Alright, so they'll go through that again. The only difference is when they go through the second time, they'll end with the two E's, just as we did, but there'll just be a final E. they're going to come in with basically an, the same rhythm but we are going to switch the chords so play your E seventh all right so keep your ring finger off the uh, fourth string second fret all right just hit the lower half of the chord and then the upper half seventh and do the same thing again this will be twice then we go back to our E seventh all right then we go to a B seventh A seventh and A seventh so just a little bit different rhythm there where the band is more staccato at that last measure and turnaround and so forth. And then we are in actually to verse 2. Now verse 2, the only difference from verse 2 and 1 is we're only going to go through it one whole measure of sequences. All right, We're not going to do it, if you will, twice short and we go into the solo rhythm which fades us out okay for the solo again he's he's doing just a bunch of licks these are pretty much all up here in the um, E minor blues scale so we'll be speaking to that um, and what he's doing within that um, I've given you in my notes the E minor blues scale so if you want to learn that scale, which I suggest very highly, and be able to just improvise amongst it, all right? So the way he starts out will be this. All right, so he's bending the fourth fret of the second string up and then hitting the open once and then again with letting it ring a little bit. All right, so four is not in our blue scale. Alright, why is he doing that? Well, he's bending it up. So, if we're not on blues scale, he's bending it up to this note here, the E. Alright. So, so, he's very close, but he's referencing. Then we go to the three open on the second string, back to four bent, and then open on the first string. 
So notice whenever he goes to that four, he's bending it up. And then he's hitting the open second string. And then again, another four and two open first strings. He'll do that again. Then he'll do it, but he comes back to four unbent. It's not really a sour note because we're getting ready to change. So he'll reference that change with the next little lick. Two slid up to four on the third string, catching the third fret of the second string. Then he goes open, four bent to zero. All right, and then again. Then he's going to do three bent and then zero. And then back to three bent on the second string to zero on the first string. All right, so I knew it's a lot of notes, and again, it's broken up with how he plays this. So you really have to kind of follow my notes and the song. All right, so the second measure of this first solo really starts to come into its own. He'll be playing more of a full solo that's continuous, if you will. So what we're going to do is hit open second to first string and then three and then three back. All right. Then we do this. All right. So he's going to slide from the second fret into four, catch three, then hit four on that third string back to three. Another slide to three. Then a slide back from four to two. Then we're gonna slide again to four three and then hit open first string. I'll just stop there. So we're gonna go four three on the second string to open third fifth back to third fret and then open on the first string. Then we just kind of walk through the scale. Three to open on the second string. Then three to two, bend and release, and then hit open. Then we come to the second fret of the fourth string, back to open, back to second fret of the fourth. The open is on the third string. All right, so we have this. to the third string with the second fret bent and released and then hit open. Back to the second fret of the fourth string. Then we come to the third string but we're going to go to the fourth fret and slide to two and open. And then back to the fourth string hitting the second fret twice to open. And then second fret of the fifth string to open and second fret of the fourth. So, like I said, this is a lot of notes, but it's really listening to what he's doing and how it's played. Solo continues on. We're going to be on the third string now. We'll go open to second, and then we'll hit the second fret again, hammering into the third, back to second, and open. Then we come to the fourth string, second fret, to the third string, second fret, and open. Back to the fourth string, second fret, third string open to second. To the fourth fret, it's second. All right, so up to that point, one, two, three, four. string two open two and then we'll hit twice again on the second fret and then we kind of end this third measure with a walk up from the third string open to first and second fret little vibrato there fourth measure of the solo we're getting into the turnaround and starting towards the end of the solo so the first little part of it will sound like this Alright, what we're going to do is hit the 4th string 2nd fret 
to a third string open. Then a little quick slide three to two. And then we grab the fourth string, second fret to first, back to second. And end trilling from open to first fret on the third string. I trill the next lick that we'll hear. And again, this continues on, but I want to break it down for you. So the next part of the breakdown will sound like this. Alright, basically we're sliding on the 3rd string, 2nd fret to 4, catching the 3rd fret of the 2nd string, back to 4, slid back to 2, and pulled off to 2, and then 2, open 2 on the 3rd string. So this is all 3rd, just one note on the 2nd. Then he comes down, he grabs the 2nd and 3rd string, I'm sorry, 1st and 2nd string, at the 2nd fret and 3rd fret with a slight bend and then open to the 1st string. Then we come down the scale so we'll go to the 2nd string 3 to open, 3rd string 3 to open, to the 2nd fret of the 4th string back to the 3rd fret open. Third string open. I'm sorry, it's just a lot of notes. Alright, so after the trill, let's take that together and then up to that open third. One, two, three, four. the fifth string jump up from that third open to the fifth string second fret to open fourth and then second fret of the fourth and then follow that open to second fret on the third to open second back to third um, string second fret all right so what we have after that open follow it up with the first fret of the third string hammered into two and then open and then we wind things up with a little turnaround here the fifth string second fret to open four I'm sorry to the fourth string first second fret open third then we come back to the fourth string second fret pulled off to open and hammered on to two Alright, so from the trill all together, one, two, three, four. From the trill all together. One, two, three, four. solo one and then we're into solo two which is very short so we're going to start out solo two it'll be basically our four mm. bent up and two on the second string and two uh first string hits <laughs> then we come back and we're going to hit the third fret of the second string to open all right, then we come open second string to fourth bent up to two open on the um, first string. And then he's going to end it this way. So what we're going to do is hit the third fret of the first string, bent that up slightly, and then open. And then we come to the third and second string, second fret, 
and hit that and then open. And then again. And that is the end of the second solo. So I know it's a lot of notes and it's confusing, but if you want to play along with this, that is how John Lee plays it. Again, you can improvise, which really took me to the blues. So, let's go over this new guitar. Okay, welcome to the review of the Donner Jazz Guitar. Yep, I got sucked in. I really did. Um, you know, I've read a lot of stuff. I've had 335s from custom shops to regular ones and so forth and sold them for a lot of reasons over the years, but one of my best ever setups that I did a lot of blues shows with was a 335, don't even know the year, it was black, gold hardware, which didn't matter, but I played that through an old red knob Fender Twin, and that amp was incredible with that guitar did a lot of gigs with that so without getting off track so anyhow here we are today this diner is really an exceptional guitar it out of the box was literally um, in tune and the um, intonation was set up perfectly it's really got a nice neck on it it's not too thick but it's not too thin. Um, I really can't deal with too thin a neck, like my SG, which I turned into a um, slide guitar because of that. But it's got a really nice feeling neck. And again, not too thick. Um, I did change the truss rod cover while I was doing some upgrades. Now, why did I do the upgrades? Well, I had read online the criticisms of this guitar were the actual pots or the controls for the tone and volume. They didn't work until you got to almost zero and then it was like shut off. And I know what that is. I mean they're cheap pots obviously. It's a cheap guitar. Um, but it was really the wiring. I like a 50s style wiring which puts the capacitor in a certain place and allows you to turn your volume down with a, without affecting your tone. And that's a big thing for me. Now, a lot of modern Gibsons and so forth don't have that. And that's fine if that's what you prefer or you enjoy, but I don't. So I wanted to change out the, the pots. And I've done this before, and it's not easy on a... 335 style because you got to go through the F hole to do all this. You take out the old stuff, you pull it through the F hole, you put the new stuff in, and you fish wire basically it into the new spot. So I've recorded that. If you're interested, I'm going to be doing a PayPal um, video and, or PayPal page. Um, I didn't get into this for money, but the money has really helped me to buy some new equipment and allow me to do these lessons to sound original. So I want to keep it going. I'm going to do a PayPal page. I'm going to do things like that, the pickup. I will show you all the guitars. I will tell you why I enjoy them. I've bought a few since um, that you haven't seen yet. Um, and, you know, they come to me, if you will, in various ways. Um, but regardless, this guitar... So, what I did, the first thing is, while I'm replacing these pickups and got the guts out, I might as well, or I'm sorry, the tone and volume control, I might as well replace the pickups. Because it's really, you only want to do this one time when you've got all this crap out of the guitar and you have to get it back in there. So I changed the pickups to Buzz Tone 57 reissues. I absolutely love these pickups. They were featured on, is it Doug and, Doug and Tom? I think, oh God. I don't watch your channel a whole lot, but I saw them 
anyhow, and and I ordered the pair for my uh, SG because I turned that into a slide guitar, but it was screaming back like nuts. So I replaced that uh, bridge pickup and got to know Tom. What a wonderful guy. I mean, these pickups, are they sound fantastic, and they're a great price. You cannot touch his price. And they're handmade. He makes it as you order it. He turns it around quickly. I mean, this set came to me within a week. Same with my other for the SG. Um, just a fantastic guy. So from now on, all my videos will have a link to his site. So if you're interested, I mean, they're like, at the most, 150 bucks. I think 130, whatever. But either way, uh, he turns them around and gets them to you. If you know how to deal with electronics and that, or don't, Google it. Go on YouTube and learn. That's how I learned. I mean, my father taught me a lot of stuff about soldering and stuff, but he wasn't a musician. So the guitar stuff I really learned thanks to these type of videos um, where people teach you. So replace pickups, replace the... Uh, uh, and Tom was nice enough to send me oil and paper capacitors. So I had a set of pots and a set of capacitors that I was going to put in there. And I put in his um, oil and paper um, capacitors. And I just, I couldn't be happier with the tone of this guitar. Um, again, it, it will do classic rock. There's no doubt about it. Um, and, and it's really great for blues, as I wanted to do. So, um, other than that, I did, again, while I had it apart, I changed the tuning keys to more of a um, Gibson style, but I made them the locking type. So these actually lock. And I took a chance, and you know, it's a cheap guitar, so I bought the cheap Chinese knockoff. It took less than a week to get them off of eBay, and they work wonderful. I mean, it's basically a screw that comes up through the post and locks the screw into place. So um, the color's nice. They're not too green. A little bit of green, but just, you know, I don't like the obsessive green color of some of the tuning keys. Um, what else? Um, yeah, so going through the upgrades, I did a video on that and my frustrations with it because, believe me, unless you do it every day, it's not easy, but taking your time will be worth it. So that's what we have today. So for 260 bucks, and again, I played this guitar for at least a week and a half, two weeks, while I... I ordered the pickups and then I decided to do the tuning keys, so I ordered those, ordered a little trust dot cover, that came from Japan, which I think is cool, my little lady, because it's a donner, so I got my Vixen, right? <laughs> but I just, it's my way of, 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 of upgrading this guitar and taking my time with it and I'm extremely happy. And if this is a style guitar you're looking for, you can't go wrong. If you're not afraid to do some upgrades, it's a wonderful platform to do that. Um, and like I said, I played it for a couple weeks without the upgrades, and it sounded great that way. You just make adjustments for where you want the tone, and kind of keep it there, and same with the volume, maybe increase it a little bit. But again, for me and my age and what I've been through, I wanted it a specific way. So that's why I did the upgrades. But if you're new to this and this is a style of guitar you're interested in, you will be absolutely fine. So um, I've actually got another Harvey Benton, I think they're called, guitar coming that cost me 400 and some bucks. That might be a clue as to what type of guitar it is. But, um, cause they're not normally that expensive. But anyhow, um, yeah, it's a great age 
to to be a guitar player because these these instruments are, are made very well offshore. So hope that helps. Enjoy.